Greetings and welcome to what I believe is part six of taking apart the Monroe Model K calculator. Um, so during the break I was um, looking at the sides um, and I thought we would maybe go through some of the levers um, to see maybe what they do. Um, this was the uh, bell muting lever so you can see that it basically has a spring and it's got two little resting spots. So essentially it has two positions and it, uh, um, it can sit against the bell to mute it. So that's that section. Um, this thing, I have no idea what it does. Um, that gear, I also have no idea what it does. Um, Maybe when we put it together, we can figure that out. Um, and then there's this whole thing. So you remember that this lever um, was connected to a crank um, on the, um, uh, let's see, what was it? Yeah, on the Leibniz axle. So it would go basically like, it would go around in a circle like this. See, back and forth like this. Now, this thing over here, if it weren't actually held by the wire, or maybe, hmm, yeah, if I move this, this lever actually locks this in place, and it would actually prevent the Leibniz wheel from moving, um, which I believe would basically lock up the entire mechanism. Um, I'm not entirely certain uh, what that's for or why that would be. Um, so that's how that thing moves. Um, it's kind of a kind of a weird mechanism. Again, I'm not sure if this if this wire was meant to be here, this wire here, or not. One thing that I do know is that this over here uh, actually is a, a sort of a rubberized pad um, and it was meant so that um, it, when this lever banged into it, um, it wouldn't have so much of a shock. Um, but So, you know, maybe when we put it together again, we can sort of uh, see a little more clearly what that mechanism is supposed to do, um, what exactly this was supposed to attach to. Um, if I look on the other side, this whole, um, that lever is connected to this axle, which on the other side is connected to absolutely nothing. Um, it, uh, I think it's actually connected to something in the automatic version. Uh, but it's not connected to anything in the manual version. Uh, so, round and round and round. Um, let's see. Um, that's about it on this side. And then on this side, we had the, uh, this was the uh, zero button. When you pressed it, it popped up all the keys. And then uh, this is a repeat and a non-repeat. So, um, clearly it has two positions. It's essentially a, a toggle switch. And there's this thing, which uh, I'm not really sure what relation it has to these two gears. Uh, this is the crank gear, so it's the main gear. Um, and we went over this lever before. Uh, and then there's this intermediate gear, which actually has a small gear inside, which turned the Leibniz wheel. Okay, and I think that just about does it. So, um, I think the plan is going to be, let us attempt to separate the two sides of the frame. Um, so we've got several things that are holding it together. So we've got the um, front bar with pins in it, and these pins were for the um, for the keyboard rocking bar things. Um, there's a screw here, uh, another screw on the other side, so we could take that off. Um, 
so this uh, axle in the middle, um, I believe, can probably be removed because there is a, um, a cylinder thing over here with a set screw. If I, I think if we loosen the set screw and move this, we can, uh, and then this is a spacer, and the spacer can slide, and then we can just sort of slide the axle out. I think that's probably how we can get that out. Um, the bottom part here, I think this just screws off these two parts. And finally, you've got this uh, central member over here, um, which uh, appears also to be probably held in by screws somewhere. So uh, let's go ahead and start to unscrew these things. Um, we can probably just get away with unscrewing one side and then separating it, and then we can unscrew the parts from the other side. So. Uh, let's see, I did not set the timer, but I do have a watch that I'm watching, so let's get started. So we will unscrew this screw first. So uh, let me start another bag, first of all, so that I can bag the parts immediately. So this is bag eight. Bag eight, seven, seven, three, three. Nine. All right. So the screw comes off. Um, again, it's uh, a screw that's partially threaded and then not threaded. It's an 836. And the length is 0.625, which is a nice even 5 eighths of an inch. And that goes in bag 8. Okay, so that's for this bar. Now for this axle, um, what we're going to do is, um, let's see. So first of all, are all these levers connected to anything? So there's this, there's this, which is where the axle is. Um, this sort of hooks on here. I guess I can unhook it. And I don't think it's actually attached by springs or any other levers to any other linkages or screws or anything. So. So I think we can just go ahead and remove this set screw right over here. Uh, we are going to have to use a small bit for that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, loosen the set screw. Um, OK, that's not actually working very well. Ah, there we go, okay. So I'm gonna loosen the set screw, and then now I'm gonna to have to slide this part over. And usually that is a bit of a pain because it's usually been on there for so long. So I just sort of twist it a little bit. Now I can move it, see? Okay, and then I can probably, can I move the spacer now? Well, I can certainly pull on this. It's a bit hard to move. I wonder why that is. Why is it hard to move? Is the lever connected to anything? Okay, well, there is a spring on this side. Okay, so I'm just gonna unhook that. All right. That'll make things a little easier. And now, let's see if I can just pull. It seems, it seems tight. 
it's kind of hard to move, almost as if there's maybe, it's either too tight or there's maybe some partially solidified or congealed grease in there. Um, but other than that, I really don't see anything else. Um, there does appear to be Wow. Okay, so this appears to be oil that has partially congealed because it's um, it's not quite the consistency of molasses, but um, it's pretty close. So that definitely needs to be cleaned, um, and that probably goes a long way towards explaining why this thing is so hard to move. So I'm just gonna try to. Um, maybe pry this out a little bit. Let's see if I can pry this part out. Yeah, see it's coming out. It's just really kind of sticky. And again, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna take it out all the way. And I don't want to damage any of these parts, really. So I'm just going to take it out just enough so that it clears the other side of the frame. Um, that's probably good enough. Um, because then at least the frames will be separated and then maybe I'll have more room to work with. Um, okay, so now there's this central member right over here which has the other uh, um, bunch of pins that the rocker bars sit on. Um, if I look at it from the underneath, okay, uh, there is the tip of a screw, right? So there must be a screw on the other side. This appears to be a leveling screw. So if I turn it over and we look here and here, I think the keyboard um, assembly actually sat on it, so you can actually adjust the tilt of the keyboard using that. So that's an adjustment that when we put it together we want to uh, take a look at. So um, anyway, so there would be a screw on this side, uh, that must be the screw over there right over there. So I'm going to remove that. I'm going to change out the bit to a bigger one now. And unscrew that screw. All the way. Okay. There it is, and this is on. This is a ten thirty two screw. And it's point six two five. Bag eight. All right. So that's that. And then finally, there's this, uh, which appears to be just probably screwed on, so I can probably take my wrench and just loosen, loosen it. Okay, is that a nut? I mean, is that a washer? It is indeed a washer, so that's important to know. So there's a washer. Um, the washer is in outer diameter 0.440 and thickness it is 0.032 and in inner diameter it's 0.246. So okay, so that appears to fit on this axle. So 
Um, I'm just going to bag these, and bag eight. And now, in theory, uh, I should be able to separate the frames carefully. Uh, so, let's see. Can I separate the frames? Well, okay, this end of the frame seems loose. Um, in terms of this end of the frame, I think there's actually a pin. Oh wait, nope, there is another screw. I have to remove this screw. So let's go ahead and do that. And apparently this thing, its only purpose was to hold the bell in the right position. Um, and actually there is, plus there is a, um, a hook here for a, a spring that went over here, which I guess was for one of the uh, assemblies that we removed. So. And this is one thing where good reference photos um, really help. Um, because when you're taking, say, springs off of hooks, you take a picture of the context in which that spring was. Um, and that can really inform you later on uh, what the purpose of that spring was. And it really, of course, helps when you put the thing together. So this is a 1032 screw. Its length is 0.627, so that goes in bag eight. Now I can remove, or can I, can I remove this? Hmm. Yeah, it's kind of, it would be easier if I removed this part too. So let me remove that part. Um, it's connected with a spring down here, uh, so I'm going to have to unhook it from its post. One spring. Almost there. There we go. All right. And now I can unscrew it. There is no nut on the other side of the frame. So I will unscrew it from the frame. Screw, uh huh, lever in this orientation. And then there is a tiny washer with a little shoulder on it, which this lever sits on so that it can pivot. And then the frame. And so what I can do is pop these. Oh, I need to measure this uh, screw, of course. It's 1032. and it is 0.437. So that goes in bag eight, this goes in bag eight, and I'm just gonna measure the outer diameter and thickness of this part. 0.344 outer diameter and thickness 0.121. So that should serve to uniquely identify the part. Now I can finally take off the bell uh, thing and you can see that it, ac it actually has two hooks on it for springs. So I'll put that in bag eight. Okay. And that means that I should be able to at least check that this is loose. And it certainly is. Okay, so. Okay, so we've got this part loose and this part loose. So now um, there is this part, the central axle, which should be uh, loose by now, 
but let's also pry at the front. Can we pry at the front? Is there a place we can pry? Mm -hmm, not really. Um, I should be able to maybe, I think I can probably fit the dental pick in there. Yeah, there we go. Okay, now that is loose. So, the only thing holding together this thing is friction. So, let's go ahead and gently try to pull this thing apart. It's really the central axle that's being a pain. Um, can I, can I pry at it somewhere, like here? Not really. Well, let's see. Can I pry from this other side? Yeah, just a tiny bit. Okay. Uh, maybe what I can do now is pry a little more. There we go. Okay, now it's out. Yeah, that is really, really sticky, and that is no good. Okay, so there we go. We are now separated. So there's that part. This is the really sticky part. Oh wow, that is so sticky. That's not good. Okay. So there's this part of the frame. Okay. And this part of the frame. So what I'm gonna do is, oops, let me set that aside. So with this part of the frame, I'm now going to remove this bar, this bar, and this, so that um, I've got a, a flat frame to deal with instead of a, this three-dimensional thing. So, as before, there's a screw over here, which I will remove. Six screw, and how long is it? Point six two nine. Put that in bag eight, and now we can. We should just be able to remove this. So, uh, orientation again is important. Um, you can see that there is less distance between this pin and the end of this side and this pin and the end of its side. So it's important to note that this is the uh, right side of the machine, which has the large gears. So you can't put it in that way. Well, you can, and that would be bad. So you have to make sure that it's this way. In addition, um, there are these um, screw holes here which face up. If you put it in the wrong way, the screw holes face down and you won't be able to use it. So, okay. Um, so let's, uh, let's deal with this axle. That's easy to remove. Um, so it has a, another of these nuts. And because this looks similar to the other part that we removed from the other side, you should note that the other side was bigger. See? So this came off of the left side, and this comes off of the right side. Which we will 
will simply, oh, okay, so the axle is turning. Um, there we go. All right, there is another washer. Okay. Um, what I'm going to do is, yeah, okay. So here's this washer, right? We had a washer on the other side. We need to make absolutely certain that these washers are identical. So this is point 41. So I'm going to set this aside. I'm going to find the, the other washer. I'm pretty sure that this was a, aha. Uh -huh. So you see this actually has a bigger inside and the reason for that is that this is thinner than this end. So it's important to note the orientation that this is on the right side of the machine with the large gears and this is on the left side. So the washers are correspondingly um, sized. So that's good to know. And finally, we have this central uh, member. So it looks like there is a screw holding it on here and another screw holding it on there. So to get at the screws, we're going to need to take this gear off. So um, this is probably going to be fairly easy. Um, the first thing that you should note is that there is a retaining clip. Um, and this is the sort of retaining clip that you would normally use uh, a C-clip. So basically, um, there's a special tool that is kind of like pliers, except they're, they're round, um, and that's specifically to remove those retaining clips. Um, so instead, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull on this basically springy, so I should just be able to pull on it and get it to release somehow. There we go. There's the clip. So, clip. That too will go in bag eight. And the gear just comes right off. Ah, a washer. That's really important. Now, here's a washer. Let's make sure that we don't mistake it for any of the other washers. So I'm gonna put it over there. I'm gonna measure the outer diameter. It's half an inch. If I look at the other one, see it's smaller. The outer diameter on that one is 0.438. So that's important to note. Um, anything else? Hmm. Nope. This appears to be all one piece. Are we sure that it's all one piece? Can we pry this gear out? No, it doesn't look like it. It really does look like it was made. Oh, I see. Um, there are weld marks here. So the, this actually was two parts. There's an arrow, which is a timing mark right over there, along with the two arrows on the outside, which are for the bigger gears. So presumably this arrow corresponds to something on this other side? No? Ah, well, actually. Uh, remember that the Leibniz gear, the Leibniz axle actually sat over here. So presumably there must be another timing mark on the Leibniz wheel. Uh, so let me go and get the Leibniz wheel. And my microphone came off, so. All right, here's the Leibniz 
uh, wheel. So indeed, there's the timing mark right there. So that tells us that when this is put together, that's how it must go. Cool. All right, so I can set this aside. Um, and now we have the two screws that we must remove. Uh, or is it this one? No, it's this one and this one. So let's go ahead and remove those. The large screwdriver seems to fit pretty perfectly. So I'm just going to use that. Okay. And this is a 1032. Point six eighteen bag eight and this other screw here so difficult. There we go. Screw 1032. Six eighteen bag eight. And now we should just be able to remove this uh, by gentle prying, because there's actually, I think there, are, yeah, there are pins actually here. There's another pin over here, so the pin is a bit tight, but you can. Those are alignment pins, so there we go. See, these are the two alignment pins right over there. Um, okay, so nothing loose on here, so we can set it aside. This is uh, apparently uh, made of cast iron, and part of it was milled. You can see the milling marks on the top. Um, and if this were a cast, that means that there should be a separation line somewhere, but I don't really see it. So, I don't know. Anyway, um, yeah, this is the sort of thing that would be kind of expensive to 3D print. Um, I'm sure that most of the detail on this is irrelevant and was probably only done um, to make it lighter. Well, okay, I guess that's not irrelevant. Um, but, you know, these holes were put in because, you know, why, why have all that extra weight in here? Okay, so we've got um, this frame now. And we're just about at 34 minutes or so. So I'm gonna leave it at that. Um, we've made some pretty good progress. So we've got the frame separated. We've got some parts pulled off. Um, and I think we'll leave it at that for this video. So uh, until next time, bye.